Will you dance with me? He asks sweetly. This man sure knows how to sweep me off my feet, so there isn't even any hesitation when I accept his hand. He gently leads me out to a more open spot, and we're still the only ones there. I can see the crowd in the background dancing as well to the slow music. He places an arm around my waist and slips his hand into mine. I place my other hand on his shoulder with a seductive smile. We begin to sway with him taking the lead. Our bodies are close and I can feel my skin heat up in excitement. Suddenly, I don't need the cape anymore after all. With the sparkling LED lights and the moon out, this feels just like a fairy tale. I don't regret coming at all, even if I hadn't met up with Neil yet. I found my knight in shining armor instead. How do you like the party so far? He asks. His voice is just but a murmur in my ear. It's dazzling, that's for sure. He leans in closer, the grip on my hand tightening. You're the most dazzling out of them all. I flush red at the compliment. He really doesn't back down on his flirting, but it's making me feel all warm and fuzzy, safe and secure in his arms. We continue to sway back and forth, just the two of us in complete silence. So, how about it? Will you be my Cinderella? The man asks in a low and husky voice. His face is leaning closer to mine, our masks are almost touching. I have to find out about something first. Hmm, what's that? It's probably a mixture of alcohol and courage that makes me take the leap. I stand on my toes, my hand crawls from his back towards the nape of his neck where my fingers touch his soft black hair, and I lift my chin up. My entire body is buzzing with feelings like some kind of drug. I force him to look down at me, our masks bump into one another, and I finally plant my lips on his. It's brief and innocent, mostly because he pulls back while drawing in his breath. The grip around my waist loosens and he drops my hand. He stares at me in disbelief. I immediately feel my stomach churn and my face reddens at lightning speed. Oh my god, what have I done? It feels like the longest second in the world as he stares at me in shock. But then suddenly I'm pulled back into him and there's a hand on my cheek guiding me closer to him as he kisses me. Whatever I felt just moments ago melts away in an instant, and instead I feel myself overwhelmed with passion. I cling my hand onto his vest and press closer to him, closer to his lips. They're warm like fire. I close my eyes and sigh against them. His lips caress me gently, and almost hesitantly, trembling ever so slightly as if he's afraid of something. But the longer we stay like this, the more confident he grows, especially when I'm responding and shivering to his touch. I'm in disbelief with what's happening, and we both break away from each other. I stare at his lips, which are red and moist. I want nothing more than to throw myself back at those. I breathe harsher than normal, and we stay like this for a little while, him holding me in his arms. My hand slips away from his neck, and I press it against his chest instead. I look down and suck in a breath. My entire body is tingling, I'm even trembling a little, and it's most definitely not because it's chilly outside. Then he slowly lifts my mask a little bit, moving it out of the way so he can reach my lips again more easily this time. I hold back a moan that's desperately fighting to escape, and I daringly use my tongue to open his lips, Jesus Christ. <sighs> when we touch, there's a zing going through my body like a shockwave. Forget about holding back moans, I have a hard time keeping myself standing straight. We kiss over and over again, our tongues hurriedly intertwined. It's like time stood still at that moment. Our magical moment is broken when someone suddenly discovers us. It's the drunk cousin. Neil, there you are! I've been looking all over for you. Wow, hold on there. I told you to take her home, not ravish her on the spot. We both jump away from each other, flustered that someone caught us making out. But that's also when my brain started to stop acting like mush and I had my common sense return to me. Neil? I repeat, suddenly feeling my heart drop into my stomach. I knew his voice was eerily familiar despite being deeper, but it couldn't be, right? It can't be. I quickly take the mask off his face. You sly. You sly motherfucker. I feel my body turn to stone. There he is, Neil. With his golden eyes that were hidden away behind a mask, supporting a new black haircut, he's avoiding looking at me in the eye. But it's definitely Neil, alright? You. I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. Suddenly a million questions race through my head and I'm filled with a feeling of disgust and betrayal. In my anger, I lash out at Neil and I slap him across the cheek. You, I repeat. How dare you, Neil? You knew this whole time? I'd been kissing Neil the entire time. I'm so embarrassed. Neil brings his hand to his face, covering his mouth and looking away from me. I wasn't... I feel like I'm intruding on something, says the cousin. 
No, you're not intruding on anything. I'm about to leave right now. Neil makes a move to try and prevent me from leaving, but I gather my dress in my hand and hurriedly dash away, refusing to look at Neil any longer. I flee the ball, running high on emotions. He did trick her. He did trick us. I, I wish you didn't. It's so like such a boring look, but like I just don't have to. I just can't be bothered. The day of the masquerade ball was also the last day I saw Neil. I'm mad and haven't really gotten my feelings under control ever since. I'm not quite sure what to make of the situation either. All I know is that I've been avoiding Neil ever since. I haven't even told Sarah what's going on. I can't make any sense of it. I just cannot believe the nerve of him, pretending he was some stranger who didn't know me, taking me for a fool, flirting with me, making me believe I had something real going on. Oh, I'm just too angry at him. The door of my boutique opens and disturbs my thoughts. Ah, a customer, at least that will distract me. A woman enters the boutique and with the way she's confidently making her way over towards me, makes me think I know her from somewhere. Darling, she cries out. I cringe. Yes, I know her. That's the woman from the ball. Apparently Neil's cousin. I don't really want to deal with her right now. Can I help you? I ask anyway. It's me, you know, the kind of tipsy gal at the masquerade ball. It's okay if you don't remember me, but I recognize your exquisite taste from anywhere. Nice to meet you. I'm Angela Parker. I simply nod my head and briefly take note that her last name is different from Neil's. She's his cousin. Valky Hearth, what can I do for you? Well, you see, I had to get my hands on whoever designed your costume, and after grilling my cousin about it, he mentioned you were the designer. Huh, fancy that. She laughs a little. Anyways, I am in need of your services. I want you to design me a dress for an upcoming Christmas party. Dresses at last, something I'm good at. What kind of dress? A devious smile plays on her lips. A smoking hot dress that will make anyone's panties come flying off, including my own, perhaps. You know, something raunchy. I stare at her a little bit and cock an eyebrow at her. Perhaps you'd like to go naked instead? Angela laughs out loud in a shrill voice. Haha, <laughs> you're funny, I'll give you that. She leans down on the counter, playing with her hair, but no, I want the dress to come off later. I'm going to a formal event with a guy I'm trying to impress, so I need to amp up the foreplay. The way she talks makes me feel a little embarrassed. She doesn't have much of a filter on herself. Something red, or perhaps something black. Maybe something transparent, I joke. Hey, that could work. She nods her head. Lately, those celebrities are prancing around in nothing but sheer pieces of cloth that are an excuse for an address anyway. Uh, but you said this event is formal? Angela shrugs. They're used to it. I can only imagine how used they are to it how used they are to her forwardness but hey the customer is king i think i can make something that suits your tastes that's fantastic she quickly rummages through her purse and pulls out a business card here's my contact info just give me a call and we can set up an appointment i accept her business card it looks actually quite business-like despite her personality i'm not quite sure i'm up to this task but i'll give it my all i will i say with a smile great you'll hear from me soon bye bye now she turns to leave the shop A few days later, and I had set up an appointment with Angela Parker. I called her after our initial meeting and told her I had a few designs in mind and wanted to look over some with her. For some reason, she was too busy to visit me, so she proposed I visit her instead. Since it was a slow day at my store, I figured I could pay a house visit after all. So that's where I am now, standing in front of a tall apartment building, waiting for the doorman to let me in. I've got my portfolio and drawing materials with me. The building looks pretty fancy. I wonder if Angela is just as rich as Neil is. Soon enough, I'm welcomed inside and I go up the elevator to her apartment. I ring the doorbell and patiently wait for Angela to answer. There you are. You're looking lovely today, says Angela as she opens the door with a phone against her ear. No, not you, sir. Although I'm sure you're looking lovely today as well, she answers to the phone. Angela motions for me to come inside and I rush in. Angela's apartment looks pretty spacious and modern, with funky-looking furniture that seem very contemporary. I look around for a place to sit, and again, Angela motions to the very white and pristine couch. She sits down herself, holding up a finger to let me know she'll be right with me, and continues talking on the phone. Angela finally hangs up. Sorry about that, I'm busy with work, but anyways, show me what you've got. I throw myself into my work, the one thing that keeps me distracted from everything else, and the one thing that's my passion in life. I show Angela my portfolio of sketches that I made for her dress, showing her a dozen designs. With each one, she gasps and compliments me and tells me which part she likes and which ones she doesn't. We spend our time discussing what elements we could combine together to create her perfect dress. I'm actually having quite a bit of fun. No one has really shown such an interest in my work before. 
The one thing I'm grateful for, she hasn't brought up Neil, not even once. I welcome the, d the distraction. Angela gets another phone call, interrupting our heated discussion whether or not to cover up her private parts. She quickly answers the call and starts pacing around the room. I go back to sketching the dress we were working on together, wondering how I can make it look not so tacky. Uh, hmm, why not come over? Angela asks the other person on the phone. I'm too engrossed with my sketches, so I'm not paying much attention to what Angela is saying. I hold up the portfolio to her after I finish the sketch. Angela gives it a quick look over, then points at her breasts and shakes her head before babbling some more on the phone. I translate this as not enough cleavage and start conjuring up a new sketch, turning, tuning out her conversation. After Angela hangs up the phone, we get back to her dress again. I know I'm spending way too much time and effort on getting the sketch just right, but I'm having fun, so I don't really mind if she makes a thousand revisions. Right, I haven't asked yet. What's your rate? Angela asks. It's a blank look on my face. Uh, I've always found it rude to tell people how much I charge, especially with each dress when each dress was unique and had a different price. I couldn't really answer her question. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Name your price. I'll gladly pay you for all your effort. You're doing such a wonderful job so far. I suddenly feel coy and smile. Thank you. Her phone starts to ring again and Angela throws her hands up in the air and quickly answers it, but not before excusing herself. She walks out of the living room. I take a little break, wanting to have Angela's opinion before I work any further, and I simply look around the room. There's a few photographs hung up on the wall and I make my way over to examine them. They're mostly pictures of Angela in different attire from famous looking places such as the Pyramids of Egypt, the Eiffel Tower, and a bunch of other famous landmarks. She's travelled quite a bit. There aren't really any family pictures though, I wonder why. But then I spot one that has Angela in it when she was a teenager and a young looking Neil. I feel my face flush red as I suddenly remember that night at the masquerade again. I avert my eyes from embarrassment. Angela walks back into the room. I do apologise for being so busy at the moment. People just can't get enough of me. Your pictures are beautiful, I say with a smile. Do you always travel alone? I only see you in the pictures. Angela's smile falters. She gives me a faint half smile instead. Mostly, yes. Not on good terms with the family and all. But that's a story for another time. Now, where were we? We get back to work and we manage to get a little bit more of the design done. Then the doorbell rings. Angela leaves the room to answer it and I'm back to pouring my ideas into my sketches. Couldn't it wait? I hear someone say from the hallway. No, it couldn't. You have to see this. I've been dying to show you, I hear Angela respond. They walk into the room and I look up from my portfolio to greet them. Hi. I swallow my words. Neil immediately averts his eyes. He's still spotting that black hair of his that's so unfamiliar on him, but his face is all too familiar to me, despite looking paler than normal. What's she doing here? He asks Angela. Excuse me? What are you doing here? Angela knocks him over the head. Be nice, young man. I'll have you know I've commissioned her to make me a dress. Yes, but why is she... Neil gestures with his arms. Here. Angela sits down next to me on the couch. I'm too busy to leave, so I invited her over. Don't talk like I'm not here, I say in an angry tone and glare at him. I'm trying my best to fight off the blush that's trying to come up to the surface. I'm not talking to you at all, says Neil with disdain. He then looks at Angela. You didn't ask me to come over for her, right? You know I'm swamped with work this week. I can't afford to take off breaks. Pooh, you're always working lately. I just wanted to show you our, our vase. Just look at how fabulous it turned out to be. Angela points towards the simple white vase standing on top of the coffee table. Neil sighs loudly, covering his face with his hand to show his disappointment. I sit there quietly, seething in my anger, clenching my fingers around my pencil case. I need to go. I can't stand being around him any longer. Angela, I'm leaving, I tell her. I scoop up all my materials and close my portfolio. Sweetheart, no! You don't need to go if this baboon is bothering you. Baboon? Neil interjects. I'll let you know when I've come up with a suitable design. I quickly stand up and I walk away from both of them, refusing to look at Neil any longer. I can hear them yell at each other when I finally leave. Dunk -a -dunk -a -dunk -a -dunk. It's been about a month since I've started working on Angela's dress. She needs it next month before Christmas, so I've been working extra hard. I don't want to think about Neil at all. I've been trying hard to suppress any thoughts about him, so I work even harder. Sarah came over today. It's the first time we've met up again since before the ball, which meant, of course, she's been asking questions about it nonstop. Did they give out awards, like a king and queen award? She asks very excitedly. This wasn't a prom, Sarah. I sigh. I really don't want to talk about it. Aw, but I can totally see that being a thing, you know? Anyways, I'm still completely jealous that you got to go. I say nothing. I stare at the little notebook on my counter, filling in some numbers. The person you're making this dress for, you met her at the party, right? Asks Sarah. Yes, she was quite drunk back then. 
Sarah chuckles. What about you? Did you drink a lot of champagne? Hmm, some, I say, trying to avoid talking about it too much. Meet any other clients? Or perhaps Prince Charming? She asks with a wink. I can feel my face heat up and I'm unable to stop the blush from spreading on my cheeks. I quickly turn around to hide my face from Sarah, but alas, she spotted it nonetheless. You're all red in the face. Falky, you didn't tell me anything happened at the party. Come on, spill. Did you meet some rich guy and you had an enchanting evening together? I groan out loud. I don't want to talk about what happened. You met some prince at the party and you completely forgot to mention it to me. I'm hurt. It's not like I forgot, I say. I just don't really want to talk about it. That night didn't have a good ending. Oh, she says Sarah. She looks worried. What happened? Did something bad happen? Bad? I don't know what to call it. All I know is that my feelings are a mess and it's all Neil's fault. You didn't get molested, right? Sarah sounds really serious all of a sudden. What? No, I shriek. No, no, nothing like that. Although I guess it does feel a little similar to it. Had I known it was Neil, I definitely would never have gone along with it. I would never have kissed him. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's not cool. Or at least I think so. I'm still so confused. Good, says Sarah in relief. Don't scare me like that. You don't have to worry about that. I'm just a bit overwhelmed at the moment. I need some time to process it. Sure thing. My phone vibrates, a welcome distraction from our conversation. I answer the phone. Olympus, how may I help you? Valky, I have to ask you a big favor right now. It's Angela. She sounds distressed. What is it? I ask a little bit concerned now. Is she counseling the commission? Neil, he's in the hospital. Doesn't he work at the hospital? I state as a matter of fact. I don't know what happened. They say he's collapsed. His parents are out of town, so he's got no one taking care of him. I'm in Italy at the moment. I can't visit him either. Lovely little country, by the way. They've got the wine to die for. Is he okay? I ask softly. As much as I don't want to admit it, this news fills me up with dread. You have to go there now, please. He's got no one else. He's in a room. He's, he's in room 201, West Wing or something. Oh, be sure to dress up nice, sweetheart. You want to bedazzle him if you, you'll be the first person he sees. Uh... I'm not quite sure what to say. It's always hard to get a word in when Angela starts talking. It's also hard to tell her no. Oh, and knock him on the head for me. Thanks. Bye-bye, darling. She hangs up. I stand there feeling empty for a few seconds. Neil's in the hospital. Who was it? Says Sarah after noticing my grim, grim expression. Um. Suddenly I can feel compelled to leave. I'm worried, but at the same time I want nothing to do with it. And yet I've got this need to see him. My emotions are in such turmoil. Why did Angela have to call me? I'm sorry, Sarah. Something came up. I need to leave. Can you close up shop for me? Uh, yeah, sure. Sarah nods her head at me. I hurriedly walk out of the store and then race towards the hospital. My heart is thumping loudly when I arrive at the hospital. I ask the front desk where he's being held at and they give me a room number. At least he isn't in the ER or something. Well, she told you he's in room 201 in the West Wing. There's this hard to swallow feeling stuck in my throat and my adrenaline is rushing through my veins as I make my way through the maze of hospital rooms. Shaking just a tiny bit, I open the door to his room. I look at the hospital bed. It's empty. I start to freak out. Where did he go? Did they take him away? Is Neil okay? Or did I get the wrong room? Someone's in the bathroom. I scared the hell out of me. I just about had a heart attack. The bathroom door opens up. Out walks Neil wearing his usual clothes. Oh, he looks surprised to see me. He looks absolutely fine. I stand there rooted to the ground. I want to yell at him and I want to embrace him. I want to hit him, yet kiss him. I've never had such conflicting emotions before. Angela told me he collapsed, but he's up and walking about. In fact, he seems quite healthy. Feelings from the past few weeks are starting to bubble over and I can't help myself but get angry at him. You asshole. I finally decide to say my lip starts to quiver. You're such an asshole. Hey now. Neil doesn't quite know what to do with me, so he moves closer. Your cousin told me to hit you. I sneer at him. Now I know why. I grab the pillow off the bed and fling it at him. It lands at his feet with a dull thud. You're absolutely fine, I yell. You have me so worried. I throw the other, smaller pillow at him as well. I don't even know why I was worried about this stupid jerk. Neil catches the pillow and throws it to the side and growls at me. No one asked you to be worried about me, and for that matter, no one asked you to come. Why are you here? Angela called me. She said you'd collapsed. That conniving little, Neil mutters. Sighs deeply. Look, I'm fine. Obviously not, I bite back. I simply haven't had the recommended amount of sleep for the past three days. My body shut down. That's all there is to it. I work too much. To cover up how worried I was feeling, I huff and place my hands on my hips. Don't your parents own the hospital? Can't they simply give you a few days off to rest? Neil's eyes flash with anger. Don't talk like you know anything about me or my family. 
I bite back my words. I want to yell at him and say, it's because you never tell me anything about yourself. But then I remember how he made a fool out of me and the feelings of betrayal bubble up inside of me once more. Oh, sorry for not knowing anything about your family situation. I can't seem to hold back my tongue. I only know how you like to insult me and make a fool out of me. Even now I rushed out like a fool to see if you were okay. Neil stays quiet for a while. He's looking at me and I stare back at him, ready for a fight. His face contorts into a bunch of different emotions. It's hard to read him. He eventually looks down at the floor. Why did you come? He asks softly. So softly. I want to answer because Angela told me, but we both know that wouldn't be the truth. And yet, I don't really know myself either. Whatever Neil is involved, whatever Neil is involved, I'm unsure of everything. These past couple of weeks have been mayhem for me. I don't know. I answer truthfully, but I'd hate myself if I didn't at least check up on you, despite what you've done to me. And I want to ask, why did you do it? The question that I refuse to let myself think about, but has been haunting me ever since. Why did Neil pretend to be a stranger? Why did he kiss me? I haven't done anything to you that you didn't want to, he says coolly while crossing his arms. That was all you. I, gave him, I give him a pointed look. That was all me, he says, like he wasn't the one that was coming onto me and flirting with me and making my head spin. Like he wasn't the one that was holding my face and pressing his lips to mine. He's going to deny everything that happened. I glare at him hard. Is that how you want to spin this? I spit out. Fine. Goodbye, Neil. I turn on my heel and leave him standing there in the hospital room. <laughs> you jerk. You fucking jerk. My voice is going. A few weeks have passed since I last saw Neil at the hospital. It's already December by now. Angela's dress is finished. Oh, well, she still needs to do her final fitting so I can make adjustments. But other than that, her raunchy dress is about completed. Just in time as well, her party is next week. The shop is quiet for today, but I'm rushing in and out of the workroom to add in last minute details on the dresses, on the dress or cut away any loose threads. Staying busy is the only way to prevent myself from thinking about anything else. Things like... The bell rings and I look up. That must be Angela coming over to pick up her dress. Except the person in front of me isn't Angela. It's Neil. He looks bashful and out of place in my store, fidgeting on the spot and refuses to meet my eyes. My breath is caught in my throat. I don't even greet him. It's like time slows down to a miserable crawl and every second is like an eon that simply highlights the fact that neither of us are speaking. The silence is deafening. Why is he here? <clears throat> Neil finally clears his throat. Angela sent me in her stead to pick up the dress. I lower my eyebrows at him. I need her here personally for any final alterations. I expected as much, Neil says with a small sigh. I'm quick to show him the door then. So I'm sorry, but Angela needs to come over herself. Good day. Neil's eyes suddenly widen. Wait, he exclaims. I look at him, waiting for him to say something. Anything, really. Yet, yeah, on the other hand, I don't want him to say another word either, because I'm scared of what he has to say. I'm nervous and anxious and still really mad at him. Look, um, I just wanted to say, Neil's speech is clumsy, which is very unlike him. Thank you for checking up on me a few weeks ago. I slowly nod my head at him. Don't mention it, I say. No, really, don't mention it. I've been trying to forget ever since. Neil nods his head at me as well, this time his expression back to being serious. The Neil I know. He turns around and starts to walk away. I let out a jittery breath of relief. No, that's not what I wanted to say. Neil turns around once more to approach me. He takes a huge breath and awkwardly fixes his tie. His lips part, but no words come out. I stare at him some longer, wondering what he wants to say. But with each passing second, I can see Neil is starting to break out into a sweat. His cheeks are turning a rosy colour. If it had been any other time, I might have reveled in the fact that I'm making Neil feel out of his element. But right now, I've got no leg to stand on. I'm feeling uncomfortable as well. That night, why did you... Why did you pretend to be someone else? I cut him off. It's the question I've been afraid of asking for a long time now. Neil blinks at me, then looks away again. He runs his finger through his black hair like he doesn't know how to respond. I... He sighs. There's silence between us, stretching out for an uncomfortable minute. Neither of us know what to say until Neil awkwardly shifts around. Every year, they hold the masquerade ball in my father's honour. Angela and I have always attended since we were little, Neil finally says. We try various things to look different from normal, turning it into a bet of who could spot the other first. This year I changed my hair colour even though it didn't matter as Angela found me relatively fast. So you planned this, I say slowly, taking in the information. No, he immediately replies. He winces at his own words. I mean, yes, in a way, I planned to make myself look unrecognisable. 
So it really was your plan all along, to make a fool out of me. I say, anger spiking in my voice. Look, I didn't do it like I had some clever master plan all along, setting you up because me and Angela cooked up some hilarious prank. Believe it or not, I like things simple and clean. I figured you'd notice straight away. I feel myself turning red for not recognizing him. I mistook someone else for you. Some other guy had purple hair like you do. Same height too. He even rudely bumped into me, but, but that doesn't even matter right now. Congratulations, Neil. You got me with your new dye job. I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. My heart's beating in my throat. It's starting to hurt. I look at him, desperately searching for answers. But that doesn't explain why you went along with it. Why, Neil? Why did you continue to fool me into thinking you were someone else? Your voice, it was different as well, deeper. Neil, Neil stays quiet, looking pensively at the floor, refusing to answer. I can feel my emotions bubbling towards the surface. Do you really hate me that much? Neil looks at me in shock. No, no I don't, he says softly. I... His cheeks are suddenly coloured with a deep shade of red. Don't hate you. <laughs> and then, in the most uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic way possible, he bolts for the exit. Thanks. Thanks for saying you don't hate me. <laughs> Next day, after Neil's spectacular escape, Angela comes by to the boutique personally. Darling, she greets me with a large smile. Welcome, my greet her. How was Italy? Marvellous. Just a divine, sweet little country. Although if I see some pizza one more time, I think I might barf. Angela scrunches up her nose. I laugh a little, then I gesture towards my workshop. I need you to come with me to the back to fit the dress. I can't wait to see what you've cu cooked up. Last time I saw the dress, it was still inside out. Angela walks with me to the back, where I have her golden dress waiting for her. She's squealing in awe, unable to contain her excitement at seeing the finished dress. She tries it on, and I make a quick few alterations as needed, so that it fits her perfectly. It's raunchy and daring, and that's exactly why Angela likes it. Forget about wanting to draw the attention of the man I've got my eye on. That night, everyone's eyes will be on me, says Angela gleefully. Even the ladies will be checking me out, she winks at herself. You did well, Valky. I almost wish I could have taken you with me to the party, but, you know, I've already got my plus one. He's going to adore this or downright worship me. I hope you'll have fun at your Christmas party, I say with a small smile. Angela looks at me after stuffing the dress inside, in inside of a large box. You look a little sad. Are you feeling a bit under the weather? I shake my head. No, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Tell you what, sweetheart. Come over for dinner at my place tonight. You absolutely have to. Food will be ready at six. See you then. She then grabs the large box I prepared for her and struts away with a smile. I'll have a very nicely written check for you to pick up tonight. Angela leaves my stall with her dress in tow. Well, I guess eating dinner at Angela's apartment isn't such a bad idea. Alright, I will see you next time.